message to Valtteri Bottas after Q3 at Silverstone for the British Grand Prix. Don't bother with the data analysis, Valtteri. This was all about the way the track conditions changed in Q3. Crosswind slightly different here, head-on wind slightly different there. And who was out there with that innate natural ability to be able to balance the car mid-corner with all those dynamic weights? Lewis used the analogy afterwards, juggling the balls on a moving plate. I think even more apposite is the concept of a pool table, a billiard table. You've got your balls there, they're in the middle, and you start moving the table in order to try to keep all the balls away from the rubber buffers, to keep them in the center. That's what, that's what it's all about, this managing the dynamic weight. And that is not about data. That is not about engineers saying you've got to focus more on the turn in or the entry to the corner or get the power down or look after the tires. That is all about this innate ability. Despite a spin in Q2 on medium tires, putting tr stuff all over the track, causing a red flag, despite that embarrassment, despite watching Valtteri being very, very quick in Q1 as well on the red tire, Lewis Hamilton was able to just go into this natural cocoon of letting all his feelings and his nerve endings drive the car for him. Incredible to watch, amazing to think about, given everything else that's going on, how deep he's still able to dig. And in many ways, what we saw in qualifying was a snapshot of Lewis's career, this ability, despite everything else that's going on, when it really matters, not because he's massively determined, not because he's massively focused, but this ability just to go into the cocoon and let his body drive the car for him. It is just amazing to watch. Amazing also to put it in the context of the amount of success and therefore fame that he has in the 2020s. Despite all that, he's able still to find that cocoon and to get in there. And Valtteri, of course, would be mystified. Quick in Q1, quick on the medium tires in Q2. Where did it all go in Q3? He should have been on the pole in his mind. He will think, well, Lewis, maybe the setup of his car was perhaps slightly more suited to the changing wind conditions. It was none of that. It was Lewis when ultimately it matters. And we've been talking about this a lot going into the race. Lewis is the one that can play the variables absolutely to perfection. That isn't to take it away from Valtteri Bottas because he made it a brilliant day to watch in terms of qualifying, who was going to be on the pole. We just didn't know going into Q3 if Valtteri was going to be able to do it or Lewis. And that's what having, if you've got a dominant team, you've got to have that intra-battle going on between the two drivers. And we had it today and full marks to Valtteri for taking it to Lewis. And of course, 100% marks for Lewis Hamilton for coming out on top. P3, well, you could say, I think as some observers did say afterwards, well, Max, you must be very disheartened to be so far away from the Mercedes. I say around Silverstone, that was an amazing result for Red Bull Honda. Really, really impressive. As I said yesterday, Adrian New has been doing a lot of work on the performance of that car on medium and high speed corners, and it's really paid off. That just shows how good Adrian still is. Despite all those years, despite the pencil, Adrian is still the man. Absolutely brilliant. And Max, of course, maximize the car as he often does as he so often does he found four tenths going into the last run in q3 that's very impressive when you've already given 100 percent in the first run in a car on the absolute limit so that was really impressive to out qualify well i, I was going to say to out qualify racing point but as it happened we can say to out qualify ferrari as well because ferrari have made progress no doubt about that And a fabulous lap too by Charles Leclerc, who's starting to rekindle, who's starting to find again that sweet spot in his driving that we saw most of last year at Ferrari alongside Vettel. And we saw it certainly today at Silverstone. To out-qualify Sebastian Vettel, who admittedly had a really, really messy two days, was very impressive around then. And good for Ferrari to be so close to Red Bull. And yes, ahead of Racing Point. Now you could say Sergio Perez isn't there, so racing point, difficult weekend for them. Personally, I was quite disappointed with Lance Stroll. I thought he would take the game a bit higher, as, as I said yesterday. He looked a bit messy on his final run. He looked a bit nervous on his final run. The car was all over the place when he's on the soft tire, so he had lots of grip. He did the job, and he's there or thereabouts, but he wasn't ahead of Ferrari, and he wasn't ahead of Red Bull. And that, for me, is a surprise, with or without Sergio Perez. No surprise that Nico Hülkenberg didn't make it through into Q3. 
For sure, he's feeling the strain physically. They're trying to do something about his neck. All he needs to do is come in and score good points tomorrow. And he's living up to that expectation. So a good job by Nico Hülkenberg. We shouldn't be too harsh on him for not making Q3 and what is obviously still a very, very good racing car. And then there was Lando Norris, a little bit like Lewis Hamilton, a bit messy in Q1, he had a bit of a moment, but just like Lewis, able to settle down and drive the lap on the soft tires in Q3, outqualified his teammate by 0.2, 0.3, really, really good lap by Lando. And I think more than anything we've seen this year, this was impressive because he was coming from behind, he had to settle himself down and he produced the lap. This was a really, really good lap from Lando Norris. And Daniel Ricciardo, as we, uh, as we said yesterday, also looking really good in a Renault in which even he's saying it's a bit oversteering. And if Daniel Ricciardo is talking about a moment in the middle of cops, which is pretty standard procedure for him, then you know it must be pretty knife edgy for him. But Esteban Ocon also doing a very good job for Renault. Sebastian Vettel, as I say, had a difficult qualifying, uh, but never really looked as good as Charles in the car. Everything was trying to get his V technique to work around Silverstone with all the crosswinds and all everything else going on. Really difficult for Sebastian to do that unless he's got a really good back end, which of course, as we've been saying, is what he had at Red Bull for those four years. He doesn't have that now at Ferrari, and it's really difficult for him with his style of driving. And you can see it, particularly through the Luffield section. It's really difficult for him to get anything out of that car at all other than just a standard basic qualifying lap. Another disappointment, Alexander Albon never really recovered from that shunt yesterday. He was out today, obviously not to make any mistakes, not to hit anything. The car was pretty knife edgy. The way he drives, which is, as I say, with a lot of suppleness, but he's not doing enough mid-corner management in the Max Verstappen, Lewis Hamilton, Charles Leclerc way of management. And because of that, if he gets it slightly wrong, he's always going to have a big moment. And that is what we saw with Alex. I think he's lost his confidence at the moment. He should have made it easily into Q3. And this was a disappointment for Red Bull. Yes, he lost time this morning, but that was a function. It was an electrical problem. And so it goes on. This was not a good start to the weekend for Alex Albon. Let's hope in the race from where he is, he can do something. It shouldn't be that difficult for him in a car as good as the Red Bull Honda, but of course we'll see. Another outstanding performance from George Russell to get the Williams up into Q2. Nicholas Latifi spun actually just in front of George. As, as I speak, there's a little bit of discussion about whether he backed off or not. Um, I'm just closing with a picture. I know this will annoy him, but this is Toto Wolff, who is an absolute star in terms of everything he does. But here he is, Toto, not wearing the mask correctly. I think somebody said on the news the other day that if you're wearing the mask just over your mouth. It's like going into a boxing match with one glove. So I guess people do look, Toto, to you for an example. There's always been a lot of talk going back to the James Hunt days, let alone the Nigel Mansell and Lewis Hamilton days about how much the crowd is worth. A tenth of a second at Stowe, tenth of a second at Club, tenth of a second at Cops. Well, Lewis found three tenths over Valtteri with no crowd there at all. So I think we have to stop all that. No, I'm only joking. Of course, spiritually speaking, Lewis could hear the noise of the crowd from all over England. And he deserves to be thinking that way because that was a superb qualifying lap. It's astonishing still to be saying it, but day by day, race by race, Lewis Hamilton continues to improve. Breathtaking.